What will replace aircraft carriers as the Navy's most powerful ship? The answer is nothing, at least in the near future. Some may object to me here that since the 1960s, and especially since 1976, with the simultaneous commissioning of the Ohio-class strategic missile submarine cruisers for the United States, and the Kalmar-class for the USSR, strategic nuclear submarines have replaced aircraft carriers as a most powerful Navy ship. And to some extent, they will be right. Indeed, the advent of submarines with ballistic and cruise missiles, the strengthening of coastal and missile aircraft, have made the importance of aircraft carriers in strategic strikes secondary. But there is a note here. Since they have been on the high seas, how many wars have strategic missile submarines fought? In none. When did any of them use their weapons for their intended purpose? Never. From that 20th July 1960, when Commander James Osborne, Commander Officer of the USS George Washington SSBN 598, sent the message to President Eisenhower that it had successfully conducted the first launch of a Polaris ballistic missile while submerged. Sixty years had passed. During these 60 years, the United States has been involved in more than 60 wars and military conflicts. The question is, how many of them involve submarines carrying strategic nuclear missiles? Strategic submarines carrying nuclear missiles, which are de facto unusable weapons. Aiming rifle whose trigger will never be pressed. They serve as a political argument. And knowing the total lack of courage to take responsibility for their use by modern politicians, we can safely predict that strategic submarines will never fire because they will be replaced by other, more avant-garde carriers of strategic weapons long before they even show their capabilities. At the same time, U.S. aircraft carriers are active and actively involved in almost all U.S. wars and military missions. And not just the United States. Another question is, what was the involvement of British strategic missile carriers in the Falklands War? Nothing. Instead, the light aircraft carriers Invincible and Hermes, albeit with limited capabilities, made the difference and de facto won the war. While strategic submarines are on their missions to respect, strengthen the surface and submarine fleets of the USSR, and then Russia, China, and etc., as well as bring its long-range aviation, has regained the traditional role of aircraft carriers, maintaining dominance in the air at sea by deploying air groups anywhere in the world's oceans, protecting ships from enemy airstrikes, destroying enemy ships and surface objects by airstrikes, securing anti-submarine forces and protecting their submarines from enemy anti-submarine forces. The combat units of the Navy also underwent significant changes during the development of this doctrine. These changes were influenced mainly by local wars and conflicts of the second half of the 20th century, as well as the policies and agreements of the states that own and build aircraft carriers. Today, aircraft carriers are perhaps the most versatile, truly multi-purpose and expensive combat units, equipped in addition to basic weapons, deck aircraft, missiles, cannon weapons, capable of solving universal problems, but most importantly to provide the necessary advantage, support, and conquest of superiority in the air, on the verge of an offensive by ground troops, and then throughout the conflict zone. The main advantage of the aircraft carrier in comparison with ground airfields is its high mobility, which allows aircraft carriers to concentrate at a particular point superior aviation forces, faster than the enemy will be able to redeploy their aircraft at ground bases. Aircraft carriers are one of the main components of U.S. military power from the standpoint of their use in the nuclear deterrent and missile security forces, and are also an important link in theories and real plans for possible conflicts with the use of nuclear weapons. In short, no one has removed the aircraft carrier from his throne as ruler of the seas. This will not happen in the near future.